issue with the Nile is that it is a transboundary river that flows between countries and the source of the water upstream and the major uses are historically have been downstream. And now the upstream countries would like to use some of that water while the downstream countries do not want to be harmed by their use. And it is very uh, tricky because the Nile has two, two major branches. The uh, White Nile, which comes from the Equatorial Lakes, and then there is the Blue Nile, which comes from the Ethiopian Plains. And the Blue Nile provides for Sudan and Egypt uh, more than 70% of the total amount of flow. Currently, the Ethiopians are, have under construction the second largest dam in Africa, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Upon its completion, that will have an impact on the flow of water to Egypt. So we're now facing a crisis. Um, there is no recognized um, treaty among the countries on how to share the Nile. Egypt and Sudan unilaterally in 1959 claimed all the water. Ethiopia now wants to build this dam on its border with Sudan to uh, produce hydropower. It is almost 70% complete. The crisis becomes when it is complete and they start filling it, um, there is currently no agreement on how to manage that to avoid um, serious impacts to Egypt and Sudan. As in all um, conflicts and negotiations, both sides are disagreeing with the facts of the others. So I've been involved in an international effort to have a nonpartisan, unbiased analysis by outsiders of the scope of this project. There was a workshop held at MIT three years ago, and now through um, efforts funded by UNU Wider, we're trying to look at not just the water issues, but the economic issues that this will um, imply for both Egypt and Ethiopia. The three governments, Egypt, Sudan, and Ethiopia, have come to a framework agreement, which is a principle, but the real issue are the numbers. And so we're trying to work on getting uh, objective numbers that all sides can agree so they can start working from to quantify what really are the impacts on Egypt and what will Ethiopia lose in terms of revenue if they were to um, follow those procedures. So we have a starting point for coming to a negotiated settlement. One of the, the themes in, of the Nile Basin Initiative has been shared benefits, not shared water. So one of the things that we're working on now is how to share the benefits from this dam in Ethiopia that will allow those benefits to go to Egypt and to Sudan, say in the form of hydroelectricity, and that way Egypt um, can use, see that as a positive thing, receiving that, and Ethiopia will see its investment return that they have been looking for for developing their resources. Energy is an important driver in economic development. So sharing a new source of hydropower, clean energy in the Eastern Nile should be beneficial to all parties and they should be able to get a win-win in that area. Egypt, as it looks to its future, is in any kind of agreement, is signing away um, part of its economic future to the goodwill of Ethiopia in the agreement on how to operate the dam. Ethiopia, at the same time, is counting on its investment being a positive one by having customers for the, for the hydropower and the benefits that come from that. Both sides need to develop trust beforehand that this agreement will work. However, in the light of climate change which is coming, the basic premises of how which this agreement has been made will be changing. And if there is not trust, each side will be blaming the other for what is a natural condition rather than something which was part of the operation of the dam by the Ethiopians. So developing that trust is really important to get an agreement, to operate the dams, and to deal with the future risks of climate change for all the countries and the regional development.